I work purely with feelings and emotions. I take the slider and push it to the point where I start to feel something or I drop it down until I feel something. If I don't feel something, it's not a photo, not for me. Hey guys, this is Ijaz. I am a fashion and wildlife photographer. In the last episode, we discussed the choosing of the image and then we also discussed a little bit about retouching and we discussed how we prepare our image and we write down the good points and we write down the bad points. The bad points need to go, but they may not go all the way, right? You may have blurry images or you may make them blurry instead of just taking them all out. So now your image is ready to be enhanced. That's what I'm gonna say because um, I'm just assuming that your exposure is right. And if it's not, then you have already corrected the exposure. You already brought your, your image to a place where it looks normal. So now what? Why do you need to go any further? You know, your image looks normal. Keep it that way show it to your audience and you're done. I, I as a uh, artist, don't believe that. So for me, I think this is where the work starts and this is where I put in 12 to 30 hours of work in that image to make sure that the audience, my clients, are looking at exactly what I want them to see they are feeling exactly what I want them to feel. So going back to the first video that we created, emotions is everything without emotions. It's just a photo with the emotions, it's an image. So based on that theory, I'm gonna say, now I want my audience to focus on something that I wanna show in my image. How do you do that? I do it with dodge and burn. Unlike the old days, dodge and burn is not done with chemicals. These days we do dodge and burn in Photoshop or in, in the computer on some kind of software. Uh, I use a, a software called Vives. The way I start my retouching process is I use Capture One, bring everything to normalcy. Once it's reached a place where the image is looking normal, color, sharpness, contrast. Once it's normal, I export that out into Photoshop. Once it's in Photoshop, I open it with this software that I'm talking to you about. It's Vivace. And then once I'm there, I open it up and I say to myself, okay, I want my audience to look at the eye or I want my audience to, to focus on the eye and feel X, Y, Z. In order for me to have my audience focus on the eye and look at the eye, I can either make the eye super dark or I can make it super bright. Normally super dark does not work, so let's go with making it bright. Brighter than most of the, of the environment of that photograph. So once you've determined that, you start to work outwards. You make it bright, you make it contrasty. So first thing you do is you make it bright. Second thing you do is you make it contrasty. When you want to make it make an eye contrasty, you don't just you don't just you know select it and make it more contrasty. No, you zoom into it, you select it, you can start painting on it. And that's what I do. We paint eye paint on the eyes and I paint around the eyes and slowly but surely I, I build it from the eye outwards, painting. Painting not with the brush, and but painting in Photoshop. Um, once that is done and it's starting to look like I am focusing everything, that's when I bring the big boys in. When I say the big boys, I mean the bigger dodge and burn. Once I have my spot chosen in my photograph that I want people to focus on, I enhance that by dodge and burn and by contrast. Then I will go and start to focus on the background and I'll take the background, I'll make the background dark for the most part and bring it in so slowly and so gradually, like it will never be done in one increment. It's not, I don't do it that way, it's not possible. Like I said in the past, I don't know 
how long exactly it takes for me to do a retouch of an image, but it could go anywhere from 12 to 30 hours. I mean, it's a slow and grueling process. So I will make the background darker. Once the background is a little bit darker, then I'll go back and I'll say, you know what? I think it's become too dark on this particular spot. If I have this spot a little bit lighter, then maybe the eye will travel. See, it's all about traveling of the eye. And if you can have your audience travel to the spot of focus, they will personally get engaged, emotionally get engaged. Because, you know, it, it's like, it's like, humans don't like everything just like that you know so if you work for it and you find it and it's the aha moment it's yours now it's your personal thing and even if you don't know that there is an aha moment and you are looking straight into the eye you feel the connection and in order for us to make our audience feel that connection we have to retouch it in a way where the dark dark parts of the image or the light parts of the image are complementing the dark part and vice versa to a place where you want them to see. So first, find your spot, clean it up, paint on it, make it contrasty, make it sharper, make it, um, you know, make it lighter or darker. Then go back and tackle the background. Make your background in a way, your background should you should think of your background as a road map leading to the center of everything. So everything should point to it. All your background, like right now you're looking at me, you see this monitor that we have, this big monitor, it's dark, right? So where is your eye going? Your eye is going from this side straight to my face. On this side, you have another monitor, which I believe my editor is doing some editing out there, so it's moving, but it's bright, it's dark, but since it's bright and dark, I'm kind of in the middle, it's pointing you back to this. So it depends on your lines of your photograph. Everything should point back at you and you are focused on me because everything else else is in the background. Now, had this thing been super bright behind me, you would be looking over there. Had this thing not have the contrast of the bright and the dark, you'd be looking over there, but you're not. You're looking at me. I mean, you're looking at me because I, I have eyes, number one, and number two, because of the contrast and all these lines pointing at me. So you want to take all these lines and make them a little bit darker and lighter so they point to your subject. Now, I'm sitting in the middle. It doesn't have to be in the middle. I could be there or I could be there on this side. So you choose where you want your audience to look at. And once you've determined that, you make that the center of attention. Dark or light, contrast here, paint on it, do what you have to do, whether it's color contrast or whether it's black and white contrast, that's totally up to you. Uh, the second thing you do is you tackle your background, which is so important because without that, no one's looking at your subject. You tackle your background in a way where it leads everything to your subject, whether it be the eye, the nose, could be a tree, could be anything. Let the background be your map to point to a certain place. I hope this helps, guys. I will speak to you guys soon. Thank you.